I've been killing plants for, um, <laughs> a lot of people will say like, oh, I have no green thumb. I kill, kill every plant. Like everybody kills plants. Like there are some plants that are just tough and they will just want to live despite you. Um, so that's kind of what I end up left with is like all the survivor plants and then they end up spreading seeds and then we just end up with edible plants all over the place. Um, because, not because I'm awesome, because they're awesome. You're just so awesome. This is Rhonda's Garden, the first edition, and it is the quarantine edition. We are, I would like to show you how to create little planters out of recycled materials around your house. Um, so you can start like your own little herb garden from old jars. Um, I got myself a, a little basil from the grocery store. Um, Right now, while everyone's panicking and getting panic buys, uh, all of the perishables are actually still there. Non-perishables are really what people are getting. So um, this is just a regular little basil um, that most people would just use once and then throw away. So um, you can use a bunch of these um, and then still plant it, but I'm gonna just plant it right away and give it like the best chance possible. Um, and the idea with jar gardens is um, a lot of people don't use jars because they can't drain and uh, there's a danger for the plants to get root rot. So um, I actually put rocks on the bottom to help the water drain away from the roots um, so that the, the roots don't kind of rot at the bottom with like old water. And you don't have to water them as often as something that, that drains. So. Um, yeah, I'm going to show you how to do it. It's super simple. I'm uh, going to get a jar. Check this one out. This is from some old pickles. We do love pickles in our house. Um, and the first thing is I'm going to put rocks on the bottom. And oh my God, look, we got some worms down here. So I'm going to add some worm friends and help them aerate the soil um, so that the, it's easier for the roots to kind of spread around. These are slippery little suckers. Come get in this leaf here. Come on, come on. I'm going to save you. You're not gonna do well down here. I have a better environment for you. Trust me. There's no future for you here. Come on. Worm friends. That's near wig. You can fuck off. Oh, look. Come here, come here, friend. Come on. I have a better, a better life for you. You're getting into my hands. I always loved worms as a kid. I loved playing with night crawlers and stuff. I used to collect bugs. I just love worms. Wow, they're escaping through my fingers. These guys are motivated. Ha <laughs> ha. Stop it. Stop it. Okay, and I got myself yeah, a little bag of dirt over her. A little pot and soil. Just put some in there. Put my new worm friends in there. Enjoy your new home. Have fun. I don't want to pack the dirt too tight and I also don't want it to be right up to the rim because I want the water when I put it in to easily trickle down. Um, I had a, got a couple of these jars that I packed too tight and it's a big pain in the ass. I had to like stick my finger in it and like pull the root ball to the side to make sure the water trickles down. So um, I'm learning as I go. So I'm going to put a little bit of dirt in there. I'm gonna drop it in. I get happy when I play with dirt. Alrighty, oh, it smells so good. The basil and the dirt together, love it. Just making sure it's getting down in there, down to the sides. You can tell there's a couple of these I didn't really do that so well. You see there's like gaps of air in here. Um, but they're still doing it, you know, still doing the damn thing. It rained, so this one's like a little bit of overflow. So I'm actually gonna pour the overflow from this one into here. So it's getting nutrient rich water. I could add some more. So it's kind of cool. You don't really waste water. If your one gets too much, you can just pour it into another one. You realize that these are called pansies because they are so delicate and they just want to die. Out of all of these, these are at least tough. So, I mean, since these are like really wussy plants and it's still handling it, I'd say it's, it's not too bad of a tactic. And so you can see it got through the, the roots, I mean, through the dirt. It's pooled at the bottom with the rocks. There's a leaf in there, oh, whatever. 
but it seems pretty secure. Push it down. Not too packed. You just kind of want the edges to get filled. And uh, now I have some basil that I got from the store that is hopefully going to do really, really well. So, okay. I mean, out of all these I've planted, I haven't replanted. So, like, these are the ones that have died. Two, four, six. This isn't doing well, but it's hanging on. Possibly eight. But, I mean, out of all of these, those are the only ones that died. Obviously, this species is not doing too great. Um, I think those are marigolds. Marigolds didn't like it. But, um, yeah, enjoy your new friends, Basil. And now, hopefully that'll get nice and big and uh, be producing a lot of basil for me for a while. And if you have any room, it's kind of a nice place to start a plant and then I can take it and replant it outside and let it go. So this is another great uh, recycling potter, which is a tin can planter. Uh, I have a whole bunch of them hanging all over the place. I've done a lot of experimentation to see what works the best. Um, I started with like, I think it was like stainless steel wire and then they uh, quickly rusted and broke. And then I was like, ooh, I'm gonna try copper wire, um, which I've had like a mixed reviews with. Like this is copper wire, it's done pretty well. I did this whole tower over here on copper wire if you wanna check it out. This is all from like recycled like beans and soup and all of this stuff. I. Um, I took the copper wire and I, I drill a bunch of holes on the bottom um, with like a Dewalt drill thing. But you can also just take a nail and hammer it um, if you're more patient than I am um, to just to make the holes covered in dart. Yeah, this is stone crop uh, fine leaf gold is what it's actually called. Um, and so I put them through, start at the, the top and then I, I twirl them around, bring them through the holes and then kind of make these towers before you put the plants in, of course. And so that way, I just, because we have a lot of water shortages around here, that way when I water one on top, the excess water drips down onto all the ones below. And um, I save a lot of water that way. This used to be a whole tower, but the weight of it, they all ended up rusting and breaking in the wind and everything like that. So I wouldn't recommend using this the most. This is one of the ones I made with twine. Whoops. So you can see it does a lot better with the water and the rusting and I painted these and I kind of like the look of the rust coming through. I think it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, this is supposed to be good for your skin. If you're in a apocalypse kind of situation in a quarantine, you don't want to go to the store and you have some abrasions, it's supposed to be good for you. I haven't used it yet, but uh, Jessie informed me. She's like, like, oh my God, it's so good for your skin. And I'm like, oh shoot, I just thought they were cute. This would be a really cool little thing to put up in a windowsill or whatever and if you just want to have them sit around um, on a windowsill and you don't want to hang them and you're worried about the water coming through this is really a cool thing that you can do with jar lids let me grab this if draining is an issue you can put a jar lid on the bottom you see that and um, it keeps the excess water from coming through and that way you can just use your extra jar lids from your jar gardens put it under your cans and then you can have a row of them on your windowsill and not um, worry about them leaking through and causing a big mess when you water them. I'll show you guys how I put the twine through. I'm gonna take out this old wire. Wire! So to hang them, I just got these little cool little hook things and I just screw them in or like I hammer them in a little bit and then screw them in the rest of the way to hang them on wherever. But you can do this outside in your house, whatevs. Kind of just eyeball how long I want it to be. Cut through the twine. Ah. And the cool thing about this twine is you can leave it outside and not worry about it rusting, which is cool and stuff. Then poke it through. My little hurl. And just knot it like, you only have to knot it twice. Sometimes I knot it three times just because I like to be extra secure. I really like the beeswax on the outside because it really kind of grips to itself really well. Let's give it a little tug. Like, okay, looks good. It look good. And then push it through. And so if I was doing a tower, I would do the same thing, but 
through the holes on the bottom before I put um, my plants in there. There you go, buddy. Enjoy life. So I hope you guys enjoyed my little tutorial on how to recycle your jars into planters and recycle your cans into little, you know, flower towers that save water, save space, and uh, save you money. And it smells so good. All right, guys. Thank you. See you next time. Bye. Say bye. Bye. <laughs>